Good evening. This is Political Forum for Wednesday, July 6th. Today we welcome Alderman Millie Santiago. Um, thank you for appearing on a Political Forum, Alderman Santiago. My name is Elizabeth Granado. I'm a board member at CAN-TV. You are watching a live interactive program to you as, brought to you as a community service by CAN-TV. Um, please be sure to tell your friends that they can also watch this show at cantv.org forward slash hotline. Um, we welcome your questions and comments today for the Alderman. You can please, you can call us at 312-738-1060. We're going to try to take as many questions over the next 25 minutes as possible. Um, I want to get started today by uh, saying thank you, Alderman Santiago, for joining us tonight. And could you tell us a little bit about yourself? I know that this is your first term in office. Can you tell us how that has been for you so far? First of all, I want to thank you for inviting me here today I think it's a great opportunity to talk to the constituents and people from the city in general about what we do as aldermen. Uh, my first year has been very, very good. It's been a little over a year. We, uh, we celebrated our first anniversary of May 18th. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been a great year full of uh, information, workshops, briefings, orientations of all kinds. And um, one of the good things about it is that I've been very accessible in the community, trying to go to every event possible in the community. I've been holding community meetings to let people know about projects that are coming in the ward. I think it's very important for people to feel inclusive mm -hmm. and for people to also be well informed about what's going on so that they get to ask the questions and we get to have the answers that they need. Um, this year, we, uh, we implemented the program called Participatory Budgeting Program, which is a program that basically gives the opportunity for the constituents to come and bring ideas of projects that they want in their communities. And then after a certain amount of projects that people present, they get to vote. But they have to do their own canvassing, they have to do their own uh, campaigns, mm -hmm. you know, for their own projects and get people involved in terms of coming out to vote. Uh, it was pretty successful considering the first time we had about over 400 people who came out to vote for, for the projects that people presented. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of this program is that that project that gets the, 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 the great majority of the votes is the one that I get to implement. So I think it's a great thing because not only it gives the opportunity for people to present their, pro the, their projects and one of them gets to be implemented depending on, the, uh, on, the, on how much it cost remember that this project has to do with my menu money we have uh, about 1.3 million dollars uh, for to implement all the things that we have in our ward and so you know if, if the project is a little too too high on the price that it may it may take a little longer but at the same time it's a great opportunity for people to understand how city works and why we cannot do certain things in one year and why some things take a little longer. So it's, it's a great education process. That's wonderful. And we do have a caller on the line. Caller, if you could go with your question for Alderman Santiago. Yes, good evening. I know over the weekend uh, there is uh, talk in the papers about all of the uh, the violence and the shootings that are happening around the city. Uh, Alderman, what are, are you doing specifically, you know, in your ward and, and what are your thoughts about the violence in the city? One of the things that I'm, I'm very proud of, of doing is to keep uh, that direct communication and, and making sure that the partnership with the community is stronger than ever. I've been holding my own the roll calls in my in my own ward. Sometimes when there's a shooting nearby and there's a hot spot that we call, I am the one who actually uh, calls for a roll call with the, with the police from the 25th Police District to let people know that this is something that we all have to be part of. I, I'm always encouraging parents to be more vigilant with the kids to make sure that those underage kids are home a certain time to follow what the curfew is about and for people to really say something or do something when they know or they hear something because this is something that we all have to do in common it, with, with the city, with the police and the, organiz the community organizations, with my office and, and the rest of the residents. Great and we do have another caller on the line. 
Hi, Alderman. Uh, my mom has a business, and I was wondering um, if she can just come in and see you. Does she need to make an appointment? Do you have a night that constituents can come and talk to you? I have my war night is on Mondays from 4 to 7 p.m. and my office is located at 2521 North Pulaski Avenue and the phone number for my office if you want to take a note is 773-278-0031. I'm always available depending on the uh, the uh, accessibility with so many uh, events and meetings going on but if you if you want to make an appointment to see me uh, about a particular issue you are more than welcome to call my office and set up an appointment or come during war night on Mondays from 4 from 4 to 7 p.m. Great and just real quickly I want to show an overhead here of that information about Alderman Santiago's ward office. Her office is located at 2521 North Pulaski Road. You can also find her phone number here at 773-278-0031. And Alderman before we take the next question if you could tell us a little bit about your ward what neighborhoods you represent. My my ward is, is, is actually very diverse. I have a little bit from Logan Square because of the new map. Mm -hmm. Logan Square, um, Cragen, Hermosa, a little bit of Longdale. Mm -hmm. So my and my ward goes all the way from Central Park to Major Street, which is west of Central Avenue, and my main uh, street from uh, east to west is uh, Fullerton, Diversity, Belmont, and I have I have a portion of Addison around uh, uh, Cicero on, and between Cicero and Laramie. Great. And again, I just want to remind everybody that you're watching Political Forum tonight. This is an interactive show. You can call in and give your questions to the Alderman at 312-738-1060. And we have another caller on the line. Caller, go ahead with your question. Hi. I, I wanted to ask the Alderman whether or not she supports Ron Emanuel's plan to raise property taxes in order to save Chicago Public Schools. Um, I certainly value education, but I think that another property tax hike might be a little much, so I just kind of wanted to hear her position and perhaps get her rationale. Property taxes is, is one of the uh, the most difficult topics for, for any alderman nowadays. Um, I want you to know that uh, I voted no on, on the, uh, the last budget that, that hit my, my office. Uh, I, I, I took office on May 18th and in July we were already voting for a very, very difficult budget and I know that it was a very difficult vote for me because it had to do with uh, a, a, property, a property tax hike which was something that I did not welcome because my residents were the ones who were actually telling me, Alderman, I hope you vote no on this because it is hurting the homeowners. So I voted no on that. We heard very recently during these few days. I don't know if you have been uh, following the news of all the state budget and, and those lengthy uh, sessions in Springfield that there might be another property tax coming our way. And this is something that I really need to prepare myself, take a look and, and, and read in between the lines because even though I know that public education needs to be funded, I want to make sure that if I if I have to vote for another property tax, I want to make sure that those dollars are going directly to our schools in our neighborhoods that are that are struggling for for a long time. Great. And you know, Alderman, I wanted to ask you, are there any particular developments going on in your ward right now or any projects that you're very excited about that you'd like to tell our viewers more about? The the very first project that I get uh, I get to um, to deal with was the, what is called the fields. That's where the old Marshall Fields warehouse used to be on Diversity and Pulaski. Mm -hmm. That building had been vacant for about 10, 12 years since Macy's took over. And uh, that was one of the very first big uh, uh, developments that I that I that I had to deal with. And as a matter of fact, last May we opened a very big um, grocery store called Sir Max Fresh Market. They mm -hmm. just opened up, and it's it's been it's been a great a great uh, business in our community, and a lot of people are so happy because uh, it's about seventy thousand square feet. And part of that other um, a piece of land is going to be uh, developed into uh, living uh, uh, 
uh, housing, there's some other businesses that are coming. And right across from Cermac uh, Fresh Market, which used to be a huge parking lot for, for um, Marshall Fields and Macy's Warehouse, is another development coming. Retail, restaurants, a bank. And um, as a matter of fact, yesterday we held a community meeting to let people know about the project mm -hmm. because I think it's fair and I think it's my obligation to keep my community informed about big projects that are coming. I would, I would hate to take people by surprise when something is coming up and people would not have a say-so, people would not have any input, and people need to know what's coming up because I think it's part of being a leader in the community. You have to share, you know, what's going on in your ward because I think it's the right thing to do. So, and there are other new businesses coming, uh, small businesses that are, that that have been opening up and coming to my ward to 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 get their feet in my in, in my in my ward, which is I think is a great thing when we have uh, big projects coming up that not only services but also brings jobs to the community, and that is that has been one of my priorities. Every time I have that first meeting with the uh, with the developers, I'm going to make sure that you know my people are taken care of first. And speaking of informing the community, um, Alderman, you also recently launched a new website and yes. you also have a Facebook page. We can take a look at that real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so your constituents can go to aldermansantiago.com mm -hmm. and what can they find on your website? They find information about myself, my background, information about my staff, the city services that we provide, all the um, the uh, committees that I that I belong to, they can find CAPS meetings, they can find uh, uh, events in the community, the health fair, the back to school fair, and things that, that the city uh, holds every year as well. So it's it's a whole variety of things, not only not only things that are happening in the 31st Ward, but citywide as well. Great. And would you recommend that constituents sign up for your email newsletter? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I have a Facebook page and we also have a newsletter that we that we have every every Friday. So that newsletter is also going to be included in my website so people know what we've done during that week or other events that they may be able to participate. Wonderful. And I believe we do have another caller on the line. Hi, yes. Good evening, Alderman. Do you plan on making participatory budgeting a regular event each year after the success you saw this year? The, particip the participatory budgeting? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I, I am. I am plan on doing it again next year. I am planning on doing it again next year, and let me tell you something. Uh, it, there was a lot of glitches, a lot of errors that, uh, that, that, we, that we had because it was the, the very first time and I want to be able to learn from those mistakes and make it better. Uh, one thing that has been very difficult is to reach every single resident in my ward because his mailing is very costly. So we did everything possible we could from, you know, keeping people informed through the Facebook page to the newsletter and, and basically walking the streets and uh, flyering all over to make sure that people did know about this. Uh, one good thing that we had was a group of volunteers and people who were so passionate about this. So they did a very good job. But remember, I have about 60,000 residents. So it's pretty hard. We are going to have to look for the mechanisms to make it better and have more participation next year. Great. And, you know, are there any events coming up this summer that your constituents should know about? Speaking of communicating things to your we constituents. Already, we're already uh, working on the back to school fair. That it's uh, my back to school fair is uh, August 13th, I think. The back to school fair is on Saturday, August 13th at Kelvin Park High School. Uh, from about 10 o'clock until about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We have a lot of businesses and corporations coming forward to donate and be part of it. Uh, we also have something that is, that is very uh, uh, interesting and attractive to the community. We're going to have for the first time the Chicago Shakespeare 
theater. And it's, it's the first time this summer that this uh, company is coming to the 31st Ward. And it's going to be also at Kelvin Park on Thursday, July 28th at 6.30 p.m. So I encourage everybody to come and join us and bring the family. This is going to be a great event. Also, we have, we're uh, co-hosting a property tax workshop on Wednesday, July 20th at 5.30 p.m. with Commissioner uh, Luis Arroyo Jr., Cook County Commissioner Luis Arroyo Jr. So you're welcome to come and participate. There's a lot of good information that people really want. And uh, we are also working on the seniors or a health fair, um, a more more than anything else uh, at seniors, but it's a health fair for the whole families. We don't have the uh, date yet, but pretty soon, since we have our, um, our um, Facebook page and our website is going to be posted there very soon. Great. Um, and again, you're watching Political Forum. My name is Elizabeth Granado. I am a CAN TV board member. This show is a live interactive show. You can call in with any questions for the Alderman by calling 312 738 1060. And please ask your friends and family members to watch the show as well. They can go to cantv.org forward slash hotline to watch um, a live stream of the show. Um, and Alderman, could you tell us a little bit about any particular issues that face your constituents in your ward? Uh, the, the main ones are, you know, the, the, the uh, tree trimming. Mm -hmm. You know, it, uh, last year it rained a lot and this year it's rained a lot. Uh, tree trimming, the sidewalks are repaired, resurfacing some of the alleys. And these are things that sometimes it, t it take a long time. It's mm -hmm. not under my control. To, uh, to have a call tomorrow and fix it next week. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it takes longer. We've been trying to get, you know, forestry to speed up some of the uh, backlog that, that we've had for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, by the end of summer, we'll, we're going to be able to take care of the, some of those areas because when we have uh, uh, the trees that are growing so much, we, the problem is the lighting because mm -hmm. it blocks the lighting. So lighting is another issue that we have. Hopefully uh, by the end of uh, the summer or the beginning of, of fall, we're going to be able to at least finish some of those projects that are still pending. Great. Um, and, you know, we talked a little bit about the property taxes and the budget issues facing the city. What are your concerns for your residents and for the city at large with some of the budget issues that we're facing right now? The, the the main thing is uh, you know taxes all over mm -hmm. the the uh, city already uh, implements a lot of fees on just about everything mm -hmm. and when you have homeowners that that are on fixed income mm -hmm. uh, seniors that have been living in their properties for 40 years but they cannot longer afford uh, the property taxes it is a big issue it is mm -hmm. a big concern and I want to be able to do whatever is uh, under my power to make sure that those residents stay in my ward and they they get to to stay in their in their homes uh, there's different programs that we we've, we've been trying to uh, to push uh, like seminars for people who need more information about how to avoid foreclosure and things like that. The tax exempt for for a lot of homeowners that have been living in the in their own homes and they cannot afford it. Those those are things that really really uh, uh, are part of, of my priorities because I want to be able to keep the families there. Mm -hmm. And then with all the economic development that is coming, people are going to feel proud about living in a world that has most mostly everything that people need to to be happy mm -hmm. and to make to make uh, to be, make sure that you know that they are appreciated and that 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 me as as the elder man is also making sure that that we try to get whatever the services are so that they get to stay in, home, in, in their own homes great great um, you know, as far as how constituents can learn about the resources that your office can offer them or connect them with, what's the best way for constituents to reach out to your office? Should they call, email, should they utilize social media? What is the best way for constituents you know, to reach you? You and I know that not everybody has access to social media or mm -hmm. the internet. Uh, 
I always encourage people to call my office or to come during war nights. And if they have a very specific issue that they may not be able to come on a Monday or something, they can always call my office and make an appointment and I'd be more than happy to set up uh, a space for them to come and and I have a great staff, I must say that. We have Rosario Guerrero, Rosario Villalobos, we have Rudy or Rodolfo de Jesus, my chief of staff, Kevin Lamb. I have Nila, four individuals that are so great in taking care of their constituents. So that's mm -hmm. one thing that I'm really proud of. And if, if we don't have the answers, to those uh, concerns, we always um, you know, call any of the city departments to make sure that we get uh, what people need. Great. And you know, you mentioned that tree trimming is taking longer now. Do you yes. find that given the city's current budget climate, is it harder to get services delivered to your constituents? That's a reality. It's, it's a lot harder because you know that the city doesn't have uh, the money that we used to have 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the city is, is trimming on a, on a lot of areas. Unfortunately, that is something that I have to live with. But uh, with with the, the help from the state, hopefully within the next two or three years, we're going to have a, a balanced budget and we're going to be able to restore some of those services that, has, that have been affected. Yes. Um, so certainly crime and public safety have been a big issue in the city, over the, especially over the last summer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, can you tell us a little bit about how you work with your local police commanders and your local police precinct to address those issues in your ward? One of the things that I, that I do in, an, in a daily basis is to keep uh, the commander of the 25th Police District, uh, the lieutenants, and the officers that are always you mm -hmm. know, po uh, policing the area, the ones that are, that are coming every day uh, to my office is to let them know exactly what their calls are and to keep an eye on this house that has been labeled as a drug house, a house that has some issues with gang members, a corner in a specific park or a corner in a specific neighborhood that, that, that is, is causing problems to the people. Those are the things that I really want to, to, to make sure that we, we don't take our eye away from it. Uh, talking about police, you know that be, after the Laquan McDonald video, there's been, a, 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 the city has been in a very bad position nationwide. Mm -hmm. We don't enjoy the best reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the new, um, the new uh, police superintendent, Eddie Johnson, uh, we have been having briefings with him to, to address ourselves, the issues that we're facing in an or in an own individual war. And as a matter of fact, today we had a briefing with the with the budget committee and the public safety committee uh, combined, where a group of uh, uh, activists and people from the community came to testify and express their concerns. Uh, the problem here is the lack of trust. People do not trust the the police anymore because. Of, of the history of uh, misconduct and mismanagement and accountability. So these are this is an issue that that is I, I think is a number one issue right now because people are, are tired of excuses. People are tired of the police officers not being accountable for when they when they cross the line. So a lot of activists and people are calling for an independent body that would be elected by the by the people. You know, through the democratic uh, process. And this is something that I really welcome mm -hmm. because when you have a, a group of people that form, let's say, IPRA or FOP or some of these other uh, organizations that are, in, that are in charge of handling police misconduct and transparency and accountability, you know, when, when, it, when they are appointed by the mayor, they respond to the mayor. And we need an independent body that responds to the people. We would like to have some input because we all have our own individual uh, problems in an old ward and I think it's time for, for the mayor or the administration to listen to us because we are the ones who are battling the crime every single day in our own wards. So uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow there's another hearing, another briefing or hearing at 10 o'clock so people are welcome to go and participate as well. Wonderful. And we do have another caller on the line. Caller? Hi, Alderman. We've seen that you've done so many new and um, amazing projects in the community this year. I was just wondering if you have any upcoming projects or, or new businesses or new plans for next year. 
plans for next year? Well, to continue doing what I'm doing and following up on things that uh, unfortunately cannot be completed during the uh, end of this year, uh, my my commitment is to continue fighting crime, uh, work to, to, to find funding for our local schools that, that have lost so, so, so much money during this last year, and to continue getting my, my constituents involved in anything that has to do with improving the quality of life in my ward and all, always be accessible to the community and, and listen to the residents because that, that, is, that is my responsibility. Great, and we have um, time for one more caller. We do have another caller on the line. Caller? Hello, how are you? Good. Good. You have a question? If you could, yes, I was wondering if you could explain you know, I think that we're experiencing some technical yeah. difficulties. Um, again, I just want to let everyone know that you're watching Political Forum tonight. This is Can TV. My name is Elizabeth Granado. I'm a board member of Can TV. Um, we are here today with Alderman Millie Santiago. We do have um, only a little bit of time left in the <laughs> show. I do want to go ahead to the information about your ward office. We're here with Alderman Millie Santiago today, and as you can see, her ward office is located at 2521 North Pulaski Road. You can reach her at her email here, and her phone number for the ward office is located here as well. And Alderman Santiago, before we go tonight, is there anything that you would like to let the constituents in your ward know um, as we get into the summer and we get closer to the school year? What resources should they be looking out for before... Uh, they should be uh, looking out for uh, a lot of activities that are in our public parks, mm -hmm. after school programs. I think it's very important for the parents to know that there are programs out there for the kids. My main concern is public safety all the time. If they want to uh, know more about other projects that are in that are happening in the community, other other ways to keep the kids uh, involved and and active during uh, this summer, they can always call my office. We understand that there's also free lunches for kids. Mm -hmm. I don't have the information in front of me, but if you call my office, I'll be happy to share that information with them. And if they have anything that that is uh, of concern, anything that you see that you don't think is 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 good come to my office come to my office and let us know what's going on and if anybody uh away from my ward would, would like to share with me some ideas that are already uh, been implemented in some wars that may be effective hey call us I, I'm, I'm i'm a learner i'm always try to copy things that are very effective uh for the community as well and again, one more time, I just want to show Alderman Santiago's phone number here. It's 773-278-0031. And what are your office hours again? Uh, Monday through Thursday from 9 to 5, except for Mondays because we are there until 7. Mm -hmm. And Fridays from 9 to 3, we close our office for lunchtime from 1230 to 130. Wonderful. And Alderman, I want to thank you for appearing on Political Forum tonight. Um, and thank you viewers for calling in tonight. Our telephone technician has been Sylvia. Um, Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by Can TV. Again, my name is Elizabeth Granado and I'm a Can TV board member. You can join us every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Can TV 21 and CanTV.org forward slash hotline. Again, Alderman Santiago, I want to thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, for giving me this opportunity and thank you to Can TV as well. I think this is this is a great opportunity for people to try to interact with us especially the, the new aldermen a lot of people still don't know who we are and this is this is this is a great window to to be uh, more open and to to be able to to serve the community and let them know what we're doing and how the whole city works great thank you well thank you very much and have a good night